And then we're also going to be using lines, but we're gonna use them in a neat way that you may not have thought about. Hi Christy, kindergarten. Today we have a really fun project. We're gonna start one of our very own watercolor paintings. We're not gonna do the painting today, but I know that you're gonna be so excited for when we start adding all the color, baby color. In this project, we're gonna use all those beautiful colors. Some of them you're gonna make yourself. Now, I want you to think about something. Put two fingers on your brain and think, think, think what I'm about to ask you. I want one person to tell me what they think happens when you start putting lines together. So you could put zigzag lines, castle lines. What happens when you start putting them together in different ways? What do you think? Someone raise their hand. I hope someone said shape. When you start putting lines together, it creates shape. What this means is that if you do some different types of lines, zigzag, castle, I don't know, maybe some wavy like the hills or wavy like the oceans. When you start putting those together, you're gonna start seeing a shape. There are all sorts of different types of shape. There's some that you already may know, like triangle, which has three sides, could be a circle, could be a square, or maybe it's a rectangle, which is just a really long square. There are all sorts of different types of shapes, and shapes are something that you can even make up or make your own. Okay, kindergarten, so let's get started on the art. So you should have walked in with this white piece of paper. We're gonna be using this today to create a composition. So we're gonna be designing and choosing where we wanna put our shapes. So this is what we will be doing next time with paint. We're gonna be adding color. Today we need to draw the shapes. So this is a two-step process. Today we will draw the shapes and get some texture in there and I'll show you how to do that. And then next time we're gonna be using the primary colors red, yellow, and blue to create these beautiful effects and I can't wait for you to try. For right now, I want you to make sure that you have your paper. However, you need to make sure that you have chosen which direction you want the paper to go. So remember, lines that go like this are horizontal. Say horizontal. Lines that go like this are vertical. Say vertical. So you have to decide whether you want your paper horizontal like this, nice and long, or do you want it vertical, nice and tall? Give me a thumbs up when you've chosen whether you want it horizontal or vertical. Very good. In a moment, I'm going to be passing out this. This is called a Jumbo Sharpie. However, we're gonna call it Big Bertha. Yep, she has a name. We're gonna call her Big Bertha, and she is going to be our Sharpie, our marker today. Do not use anything in the bin yet, Do especially not the markers. If you use the markers and we start to paint, it's actually all just gonna wash right off and you will be very disappointed in your artwork. Please use the Sharpie for now. What I want you to do is I want you to find the bottom left-hand corner with your Sharpie and point to it. In this corner is where you need to write your name. I would write small. I'm gonna write Mr. Boatfield. And then we're gonna write something right next to our name. This is called our class code. Say class code. I will pause the video and give you your class code. It's a number that we are going to write inside of a little circle. And it's gonna start with the letter K. But I will pause the video now and give you your class code. Good, so you should have written your class code inside that circle. Now we're gonna use the shapes on the table. Please don't touch them yet. But inside of these containers are the shapes you're gonna use to trace your shapes. So we have circles, we have triangles, all different sizes. You might find bigger circles, you might find a rectangle, you might even find a square. You have all sorts of different shapes. What you're gonna do is you're gonna take those shapes, put them wherever you'd like on the paper, hold it with one hand, take the lid off your Sharpie, and then what I do is I trace, you go around it. So there should be a little black circle around your shape. You're just going to trace that, but if it's another shape, trace it the same way. So let's try it with a different shape. So I'm gonna put this one back. 
and let's do a rectangle. The cool thing about this project is that your shapes can overlap. Overlap means that they're touching the inside. So I have a triangle, but it's also going inside the circle. So you can be really creative with this. You can make a lot of choices. I'm going around and tracing these shapes. It does not have to be perfect, guys. So now I have two really cool shapes. I have one rectangle and one circle. If you see any gaps, you may wanna fill those in. Now you also have the time to create your own shapes. Maybe I want to do a star. You could do that. I don't have a star thing that you can trace, but if you feel like you wanna try making your own shape, that's cool too. I want you to really fill up this paper with different shapes. Just like this. And this will take a while. I'm probably gonna give y'all five minutes just to do shapes. I want you to really fill it up. Okay, so it should have been five minutes. I want you to just take a moment, hold your horses, and listen to these next directions. So I filled it up with different shapes. You might still wanna add some more shapes. Now remember, we are not coloring these in with the Sharpie. However, the next step is very important as well. What you're gonna do is when you feel like you have enough shapes, you've really filled up the paper with different uh, overlapping shapes, you're gonna come up here, put your Sharpie back in the box, and it needs to have what on top? A lid. Don't leave me without a lid, otherwise I dry out and I'm really mad. Put it back into this tray. Then you're going to see the tray full of different rubbing plates. This time you have a choice. You can take a look. Maybe you'll find one that you really wanna try. And what you're gonna do is you're gonna use crayon to make some texture. Now remember, this is gonna be a painting project. So don't get too worried about color in this. But the cool thing about using crayon with watercolor is that if you put crayon down, you can see all of these amazing textures. And I want you to be so proud of your work. That is so beautiful. So you are going to use this to create some texture. Now, if you were here for rubbing plates, you should already know how to use them, but you use the crayons. Do not use that, that marker. Uh-uh, do not use that. Use the crayons, because if you use the marker, it's going to wash away, and you'll never see those colors again when we start painting. Remember, take the rubbing plate, place it underneath the artwork, and then you're going to color, baby, color. Give it some color. You don't have to color hard. In fact, you don't even have to color in the lines. I think it looks cooler when you don't color in the lines, because it's gonna make some amazing effects. And I'm gonna use some different colors, so I can color, baby, color. And I'm gonna see what it looks like at the very end. So now, I think I'm done coloring. It does not have to be good coloring. You can go kind of crazy with the coloring because I think it even looks better when we start adding watercolor. We're gonna make some really cool abstract and crazy effects. So now that I'm done, I am going to put all of the crayons back in the bag, zip it up, put it back in the bin, then make sure that your rubbing plate is put back in the box so that someone else can use it. All shapes need to be collected. If there's any on the floor, pick them up, put them back in the container that is on your table. Then, please raise your hand. I'm gonna come by and check this. I may add a couple things or ask you to change something because I want you to have beautiful work. Then you get a choice. Once I've given you a thumbs up for your work, you're gonna leave your artwork at your table. Then you're gonna follow the green arrows. You have some choices. This is the first day where I'm giving you free centers on your own. You could take the blocks. This container is used on the rug. Four people can use it. How many people? Four. So if I see more than four people using it, I have to take it away and no one else can use it. We have cube structures that you can take on the carpet and you can also have four people. Now, if there's more than four people playing, I have to take it away. So please don't make me do that and please share. If that doesn't work out for you, I have some free draw paper. You can just take a piece of paper, follow the green arrows, and use markers and crayons to color it up. Or if you're not feeling like making one of those, you could take a dry erase board. What this is, is it's the same kind of board that I use at the beginning of the class. You take one marker and one eraser with you, and you can draw whatever you want, and then erase and draw again. You only take one marker, one eraser, one board. Once we're out, we're out, and I can't make any more. Alrighty guys, have a great day and I'm excited to see these beautiful paintings when they're done tomorrow or next time. Bye.